So, yes, from another realm. So, don't mind me. Yep. Hi everyone. Hey, how you doing, everybody? How are you? There's a lot of this microphones is, here. Huh? Like a lot of people around the table. I feel like uh, I feel like we've done something wrong, and you're here to judge us. We're in trouble. And if you want us to judge, fair enough. Fair enough. This is Mortal Kombat. We we, we do a lot of wrong. Yeah. It's, it's mostly true. wrong. It's, it's mostly yeah. Yeah. it happens. Okay. I know. I didn't know. I don't know. I don't know how does it start. Yeah. Okay, so everyone gets two questions each. So it's kind of rapid fire. All right. So we're gonna we'll start here. Go ahead. And if you don't have two questions, that's okay. You can move. And um, just for you, um, you play obviously so many different voice actors for all types of games. What sets Mortal Kombat apart from everything else you've played? Um, the cool thing about Mortal Kombat is. I mean, for me anyway, is that, you know, it's always been a fighting game, and I was never really aware, I just thought it was like cool, weird stuff in a fighting game. Um, and for this iteration of it, uh, they've, they've really done work on the story and the world, which makes it more interesting for an actor to take it. So it's been, uh, it's been cool actually having something to grab onto besides punch, kick, explode heads, you know, like, I mean, that's it. So that's been, well, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's awesome. <laughs> But that's uh, that, that was something that, that really uh, that, that I loved about it. And then how did you come to voice smoke? Was that like something you tried to look for or did that really Um it was I, I don't remember exactly. It was one of those things where they said they want you to do this. Most of my jobs come through auditions. Um, and I just send out auditions and I have to forget about them. And maybe I did audition for it, but it was a code name. And so I didn't know what it was when I was auditioning for it. But I know that when I was talking to Dominic Chancholo, uh, the, the writer on the, on the game, he said they were looking for somebody to, you know, a younger voice to contrast for the, the younger brother of Sub-Zero and Scorpion. So and they, they were, you know, thinking of guys who do young voices, and that's, that's how that came out. So, for you, I had a question about the environments. Since they're kind of like a staple for Mortal Kombat, what's, what was your approach for these ones? And do you have a favorite that you designed that was like, <laughs> that's the one that we have to get in there? Sure. Um, I think, you know, for this iteration of the game, it was really important for us to show the environments as Liu Kang would see them, right? We're, we're essentially, with the reboot, this is Liu Kang's reboot. So, we really wanted to reflect that in the environment. So you'll see a lot brighter stages, you'll see more colorful backgrounds, and that's a direct reflection of this is how Liu Kang remembers it. Um, and as far as my favorite one, we've seen hints of it, but there is, I, I don't want to give away too okay. much from, but you've seen hints of it in the trailer. I'll leave it at that. Alright, I like it. Sure, I mean, you know, starting from a blank slate is, is always a really exciting prospect as an artist, right? And what's really cool is when we're able to revisit older stages and kind of repaint them in a new light and explain and explore different areas that we haven't really been able to in the past. And with these new consoles, they're so much more powerful, so we can put so much more detail into the backgrounds and, and put like little bits of storytelling into the background that we normally wouldn't have been able to. So it's been really rewarding to put all of that stuff into the background and see people pick them out and see people find them. In, uh, on the environment side? <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> no matter what you put in there. Absolutely. Um, I, you know, uh, it's, it's, we try and, 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 and make things, you know, as, as, as inclusive and as open as, as we possibly can. So if there's anything that people take offense to, it's certainly not something that we intend to put in there. You know? Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, same goes for character design, right? Like, again, it's it's kind of looking at it through the lens of, of Liu Kang, right? So our character designs, our, our general kind of motifs and design choices in the game are all reflected through Liu Kang's eyes, right? He was a Shaolin monk. He grew up in China. So a lot of, of our design choices kind of center around that. 
um, where you know we have a lot of Chinese influence in the game, architecture, uh, you know, patterns and things like that, and even just throughout like Southeast Asia, so Thai, Thailand, Cambodian influence, Indian influence. So like there is a lot of that that we we were able to, to kind of really you know localize where we're pulling all this wonderful art and reference. Um, you're right. I've, I've, this is not my first ninja uh, that I've <laughs> that I've voiced. Um, but like, like with any character I do, I mean, you guys know if you followed my work at all. I'm not like the chameleon of voiceover. Like most of my characters sound about the same. Um, and what really differentiates characters for me is the project. It has its own guideline. The writing is different. You know, the character is different. And that in and of itself changes, you know, what, what I end up doing with it. Um, so it was it was fun for me to come to this fresh uh, on, on smoke and to you know, naturally, I'm gonna. You know, some of my tendencies are gonna come in, and it's hopefully one of the reasons that they cast me. Um, but it was fun to be able to explore it from from ground zero and to talk to Dominic about uh, all of the, you know, what what they wanted story wise and character wise. Absolutely, right? It's more of a reimagining, right? Um, we still visit a lot of, of the similar, you know, places that we visited in the past, but we really wanted them to feel very different. We wanted them to, we really wanted the backgrounds and the characters in this game to feel very different than they have in the past, right? And that is a direct, you know, consequence of what happened at the end of MK11, right? Liu Kang kills Kronika, becomes Fire God Liu Kang, and remakes the entire universe. So we really wanted to reflect that in the art. When you see like some of your finishing moves, do you ever like, I mean they're cool to see, you know, I love it. Do you ever like feel bad when you see your character like, oh man? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, you know, I'm, a, I'm an empathetic human being and it's hard to see that happen to anyone or to myself in the game. Uh, but it's also, when you know, when you're, when you get into a Mortal Kombat game, you know what you're getting into. Um, so, so I just tried to have as much fun with it as possible. <laughs> And when you were creating like, like new environments, was, was it more of a challenge because it's new or was it easy? Um, you know, it's 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 always when you when you start fresh, right? There's always challenges, and, and you always want to make sure that you are paying homage to the old the old games that came before, right? And it, it was about kind of treading that line of you know how much do we reinvent here, and how much do we still you know go back to the old game and make sure that that you know the things still feel recognizable, and that goes for character design, that goes for environment design, that goes for everything. Oh, it's me. Uh, it's your turn. <laughs> right. All right, so I'm, I'm thinking more in terms of Evo right now and how that's going to translate on the tournament scene. Sure. What are you guys doing for this game that's going to keep that around? Because I've noticed Mortal Kombat doesn't seem to have like that staying power. It's like your Street Fighter sure. or like you know any other games. What are you guys changing up to kind of keep that scene around? I mean, I think the the, the big the big kind of gameplay change for us this game are, are the cameo characters, right? And it's been really awesome to to see people's reactions to Summer Games Fest and the, 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 you know, the tech beta that went out. Um, and to see people use cameos how we kind of envisioned it, right? And, and use them to, to do, you know, extend combos and do things like that. And to do things that even like our, our QA testers and, and that we internally don't do, right? So being able to see that creativity and that player expression in that way has been really awesome. And I think it will really kind of pay off in the long term because people will be more engaged of the game, they feel like they have more creative control over what their characters are doing. Yuri, uh, good question. How many times have you had to sound out yourself dying in this game? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's part of the deal. When you're when you're an actor who does a lot of voice acting, yeah. you've got to learn to die really well in so many different ways. <laughs> you know, louder, quieter, longer, on fire, electrocuted. Right. Um, and then of course, because it's a Mortal Kombat game, you're like, how do you make the sound of your spleen exploding through your chest, like, you know. So it was it was actually kind of fun because it's it's even more specific. You know, they get even more specific when. Uh, so so it was it was a challenge as it always is, 
Um, but but my, my job is basically to die, so so I, I, I jumped right in. You sent me up for another question. What is your favorite death sound? Oh God. <laughs> you know, I, I like I like gurgly, like throat blood filled death. You know, it's like you know where you're like choking on your own blood. Um, I like dr I'm making drowning sounds. Uh, just because some, some, I don't know why it comes easily, but it's like, you know, you, you learn to make a, make a sound where it sounds like water's in your throat. Um, and most people always, they always save like fire death for, for the, the last, uh, because it, it's hardest on your throat. But I always love that one. Like, you know, you're like, I don't know, and people are like, whoa, how'd you do that? I'm like, I don't know, man. I, maybe I was set on fire in a previous life. I don't know. That was yeah. very convincing. Thank you. Thank you. And then, so, because it's a next gen, what was, so, did you have anything that you were like nervous about going into it because of the fact that it's on the next gen? It was it was really exciting for us because you know when we have a, con a, a console jump and a generation jump like that, it we have so many more tools available to us, right? So we we're able to to, to put the kind of fidelity that we've always wanted to. Um, so like things like if you if you notice a, a blood splatter on the environment, we have different kinds of blood splatters. So like you have like drippy blood that leaves little little circles. We have splatter blood that like will splatter on walls and stuff. So being able to, to have that kind of fidelity and to be able to tell that kind of story, right, of how the fight played out, is that's been really exciting to see. Uh, what's the hardest uh, concept to work on from our perspective? Like, what's the hardest? Is it character or story? Ooh. Um, I think it's, it's it, there's challenges to both of them, right? Because I think on the character side, these are iconic characters. Yeah. These are characters that people have grown up with, and they have their own image of like what this character looks like. So when you reboot a character and you and you kind of reimagine it, you always have to make sure that like, hey, we're not losing the essence of the character, right? This is still Scorpion. This is still Slipsier. This is still Smoke. Um, so things like that are, are really important. And then on the story side, it's very much like we want to make sure that we are conveying the emotions and we're conveying all of the, the different things that happen in the story in a, in a respectful, in a, you know, engaging and a, a, a way that keeps people entertained, right? Um, so different challenges, but definitely still difficult. <laughs> How does it take to conceive a character to finish it from like way to point like you can see it? How does it take? To make like one character? Yeah, like overall. Who? If, if you were to go from, you know, early speeds to final concept art to blocking them out to doing mocap to animating them to doing effects to putting them in game, yeah. it's about six to seven months. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A long time. So, a lot of stuff. So diving into the story side of it all, how much of the, I guess, environment or even like the subtle details do you actually put more of the storytelling there instead of just being dialogue and stuff like character interaction? Yeah, so, you know, as far as the story goes, there, there are some really important beats that happen and we have, like, all, basically the story drives what environments we fight in, right? So we have to make sure that the environments kind of have pieces and, and little bits of environmental storytelling that fit into the grand scheme of how the story plays out. Um, so yes, that's extremely important and you'll, a lot of people have been doing like deep dives on like what Cage's Mansion and stuff that's in there. It's really awesome to see that stuff because it will pay off. That stuff is there for a reason. We're not just putting random stuff in there. I think all the other questions I have. Are <laughs> Question. Do you have a recommendation for your career path to other people that would you maybe like to follow you? Sure. I mean, you know, the big thing is is making sure you're passionate about it. That is the number one thing about yeah. being in video game development. It's or not acting, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> right? Same. Yeah, I, I would right. recommend the same thing. Yeah. yeah. You, you have yeah. to have that passion. You have to be self-driven, um, and you have to, to to want to to be there. Right yeah. and be successful in that field. Um, other than that, I, I recommend 
if, if you want to be an artist, go to art school. Having solid art fundamentals really important. Um, and, and you know, it, it, as far as if, if you want to improve your modeling skills and, and things like that, that is also like you can very easily pick that up online. There's a lot of, of, of different you know self-taught people that are incredible artists. Um, so there's different paths to take, but the number one thing is is really you have to be passionate. About it. Yeah, you have to same, live and breathe this stuff. Same on this end. Fall in love with acting and storytelling because there's a, a lot of the time you're doing it especially at the beginning, but even sometimes later on down the line, uh, you're not going to be getting paid for it. Um, so if you're not getting paid for it, the only reason you got to do it is because you love it. Um, so you got to just explore it, uh, find out if it's something that you're super passionate about. And then, yeah, there's there, there are great uh, resources online. Um, a friend of mine who's a great voice actor, D. Bradley Baker, has a website called IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com. And he's so great. It's it's absolutely free to just go and, and you just it's a, it's a vault of information. And and my wife and I wrote a book called uh, Voice Over Voice Actor that maybe is in your library you get know, on Amazon. And it's a it breaks down a lot of the stuff that that we did and that you know how the how the business works. Yeah. Hey, uh, you guys cool? If we get like a table selfie real quick. Like, yeah. Uh, we can all we can all get in here. <laughs> All right, I'll send that to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go knock out some phone. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. No problem. Yeah, Thank you everyone. Bye. And then we'll have...